Rashi Pereira, GM of Norfolk, the Fairmont, uh, Fairmont Norfolk, yes. and That's Fairmont right. Tamara. That's correct. Pleasure to be speaking to you today. Thank you, Ali Khan. I'd love to be here. Thank you. It's for really me. been a fantastic visit. I wanted to just situate Moshi a little bit. Moshi, a great friend of mine, and it's really a pleasure. Moshi, tell us the journey from Dulwich <laughs> with Nigel Farage. <laughs> We've discovered he you, 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 he didn't beat you or anything. Thankfully. Not not quite. No, no, no. <laughs> thank thank God. So after after Dulwich, your university in the UK. It's in in this in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Switzerland. Yes, yes. Oh, and then and then the first first departure point was where the departure point is Grosvenor House. Grosvenor House yes, Hotel. Yes, that's in the London. that was a st the learning ground. You could yes. Say, yeah. Uh, and how many years were you there? Seven and a half years. Wow. Yeah, yes. Grosvenor House. Um, no, it's fantastic. The, the, uh, hospitality was, I guess, something inbred. Yes. Um, what was it a passion for you? Or uh, yeah, you know, it started off, I guess, at Dulwich, and I was yes. very fortunate at, at school to do a lot of tours with sport. So mm. we travelled around the world into Far East and Australia, the yes. cricket and hockey tours, and we got billeted out and stayed in hotels. Wow. So I thought, wow, this is a nice, nice journey to have an office in a hotel, and you know, this this could be a good workplace. Yes. Whereas I think everybody in my in my batch disappeared to the city or went to Oxford, Cambridge, and I was the only one going during the hospitality. And, and they called me and said, well, you, you know, you're so lucky you get to go to the different parts of the world. Yes. Um, but I think hospitality for me is, is probably the easiest profession and the most enjoyable profession in the yes. world. And I think it's something which comes naturally to all of us. It, it, and, and it does. Yeah. It, no, you have to be very gregarious and outgoing. And yeah, but I, I think deep down, we, we, do, we, in, in, we inherently, inside all of us, we are hospitable people. It yes. doesn't matter what profession or vocation you're in. Mm. Um, because if you think about it, we all host dinner parties, we yes. throw celebrations. Mm. And what do we do is we think of our guest list and what meal to have and mm. prepare the table. Uh, you know, the wife or someone who's doing the cooking. Uh, making sure the meal is special, not the yes. usual meal you have. Uh, you, you bring out your finest whiskies and wines mm. to entertain your friends. And then make sure they leave happy. Yes. So, so what, what do is I do? Is that the secret to your success? I, I guess in a way, if you put it simply, uh, what do you do in, 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 in the hotel world? Mm. It's exactly the same. You know, you make sure the people that come are coming mm. to your home, so to yes. speak. It's not really your home, but you want it to be like your home. Uh, so you want things to be perfect. You don't want to have you know, the light bulb's not working or the ashtrays are full. You want the flowers to be fresh. Mm. Uh, so when they come in, it's like as they're yes. coming into your house. Yes. And that's what I tell my, my team. That just mm. imagine that little patch that you're looking yeah, after a fantastic team, is yeah. your home. Mm. And, you know, would you want people to come to your home and see it in the way that yes. we see it, that it shouldn't be? So, yeah, I think that's that's kind of the journey. And then so just take me to so Grosvenor, from Grosvenor, then because you've been all over the world in the yeah. most exotic and frontier locations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess the, 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 the nomadic nature of the business, probably partly because of the upbringing. You know, yes. I was born in Sri Lanka and then uh, I had uh, six, seven years of my life in Fiji mm. and then moved to Zambia and then Dalich in, in school. And then from, from Grosvenor House, so I moved to, to, to Hyatt and joined yes. Hyatt in... In London, Hyatt, in London, in London, with the Lounge and the Carlton Tower. Yes. Uh, and then uh, what that 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 journey changed from there. Went to Dubai. Yes. So that's that's when my my sort of international journey started. I think at some point I I, th I realized, in order to progress, mm. I needed that international exposure. Yes. Um, and Dubai was a great opportunity. So it was a transition in between uh, where. Wow, this is this is the nature. Yes. The monkeys having a fight there. <laughs> This doesn't happen on CNN. No, <laughs> yeah. I guess they want to be interviewed as yes, well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Dubai, yeah. Uh, and then from Dubai to Egypt, yes. uh, in the Sinai, in, the, in, in, a, in a little town called Taba, which is very close, a fan fantastic location, mm. uh, situated in, in the Sinai, uh, in, in, in the Sinai Mountains. Yes. Um, and you had, I was, I was very fortunate every day to wake up and go to bed with three boundaries, three wow. borders. So it's Saudi, Jordan and Israel, mm -hmm. you know, on the doorstep there. Fantastic. Um, and then from there went to Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, I was based in Zurich at the corporate office. Mm -hmm. 
and then from Switzerland went to Kazakhstan. Yes, and you were telling me about that. That was pretty exotic. Fantastic. Guests yeah. would come in with Kalashnikovs. Great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, from there came to, to Kenya. Yes, yeah, yeah. and then Kenya you came for Sankara. That's great. That's Started right. in Sankara. Yeah. Uh, just after And that opening. must have been different because that was a standalone hotel, wasn't Correct. it? As Correct. opposed to a chain. Correct. Yes, yeah. yes. It was a... It was a, a kind of a, a risk in a way to leave a chain and comfort zone, and come, but it's probably the best thing I did. Yes. Um, it, it, it teaches you a lot more. It sharpens the pencils in areas you probably wouldn't in a, yes. in a corporate environment. You don't have the depth of resources. So you have to be a little bit more intuitive and entrepreneurial in, in how you approach things. Yes. Um, but now I want to go back into a chain, yes. uh, having learned that, and go back into using those skills in, yes. in, in a, in a, with, with the resources and the depth there. Um, so yeah, and that's when Kenya. And today we've got, uh, you're in charge now of, of both the Norfolk, which is obviously a heritage hotel, very famous uh, in, in Nairobi, and here where we are today, yes. which is just so perfect. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Mara Fairmont. And what I noticed, Moshi, and I must compliment you on this, is because we've been following your career from the Sankara days, and, uh, and, and here, and this is the first time I've seen this place full. Absolutely, hundred percent full. Thank you. I think it's sort of Pereira's touch. touch. The Midas touch. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I wish I could take all credit, but I think it, there's a there's a team behind it, yeah. and there's a sales team, a lot of people who are doing a lot of effort behind it, um, and sometimes it, you know, I guess you, you ride with a bit of the luck that comes in, in, in the wave, and right. then you make the most of it. Yeah. yeah. And what would you say is is the secret to 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 the luck that you've had here, for example? Um, you know, definitely, as you, you touched on it earlier, the people. Because you've had, when I, what I notice is the people have stayed with the organization a long time, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. The people are, I think, the secrets. Mm. Um, I've, you know, I've been in many business hotels and, and, and locations um, and speaking to businessmen like yourself, you know, you're well-traveled, so you go to a place. Mm. Uh, so what is it that makes you choose one place over another? Yes. Um, and most people, you know, most businessmen say, you know, whenever they travel, it's four walls, mm. it's got a, a bathroom, it's got a mirror, mm. it's got a TV, it's got a bed. Mm. Um, it can be in London, it can be in Paris, mm. but the difference is the people and that's where the heart and soul come in. Yeah. And, and that's what attracts someone to go somewhere. So what is the secret of somebody like yourself? You've got a lot of people you're having to manage. Yeah. I mean, if you, I don't know how many people, for example, on this property. This property is about 120. 120, 120 yeah. people. Yeah that you're managing and obviously it's, they've been through a tough time I mean, yes. you know, there was a tough time for Kenyan tourism yes. not too long ago Correct. Right? Correct. in today's article I wrote for the star I was saying that I'm not sure whether you're a proxy for the tourism industry if you are it's fantastic but I'm not 100% sure that mm. I think it's more this is a Pereira thing <laughs> yeah no it's it's look it's difficult it's difficult you know when the times are tough and, and there's no business because the livelihoods of these, these the, the staff depend on the tourists coming in. Yes. Um, so when the business is down, naturally, you know, they, they don't have the levels of income that they would normally have. Um, but the, I think the, it's the passion that they have. Kenyans, yes. from what I've seen in working around the world, have a natural inbuilt well, hospitality. I'm in Dubai, they're all Kenyans. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. And, they're, and they're a fabulous export. Yeah. A lot of the companies, uh, you know, when I was with Hyatt, they came mm. specifically, as many other co hotel com companies did, on a recruitment drive mm. to Kenya to recruit Kenyans, mm. as have some of the airlines. Major yeah. airlines have no, taken them. come in a big way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they have that natural hospitality, yes. and that you can't get everywhere, and you can't yes. teach them that. You can't. You can't teach them. It's, it's inbuilt. Mm. The skills, the soft skills, you can teach, mm. but the, the the natural inbred hospitality is what makes a difference here. They remember. They remember you. Mm. You know, you've been here a few mm. years, and, yeah, and they makes remember you feel you. that's that makes you feel incredible. Correct. Mm. You feel special and not a number, mm. and that's I think the the secret. Mm. And keeping them yeah. engaged yeah. is is yes. probably yeah. the secret in what you have to do. Yeah. Um, you know, be looking looking after their their, their social mm. well being. Um, we. I see a lot of the folks have a football pitch. Here, Correct. Actually, yes. Correct. Football pitch. You know, and he was really with. excited when he was telling me. So you know, we're really passionate yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, with Fairmont, we've also tried to, we, we're doing a, a kind of a, a look behind the scenes. Yes. So we're looking at, at some of our key employees mm. and what do they do in their day-to-day -day life? Mm. You know, this is the work life, mm. but what do they do at home? Mm. Who is John or Fred, who, for example? And we've done similar thing, taken a film crew and gone behind the scenes. Yes. We've done that 
all over the world with yes. with uh, with Fairmont, mm -hmm. just to understand who's who the you know the faces behind yes. Fairmont. What, who are they? Yeah. What makes them tick? And what drives them in the morning? You know? mm -hmm. So the, keeping them engaged, I think, is the key. Yes. And, and, and the more engagement they have, uh, they like to engage with the clients and make yes. them feel mm -hmm. a person mm -hmm. rather than a number. Mm -hmm. And remember the little 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 soft. The things that make them happy, yes. their favourite drink, or you know, yes. without having to ask for it, that really makes a, makes a difference. Makes a difference. And then, yeah. when your staff are motivated enough to be remembering those sorts of things, that's really down to the organisation, I suppose. Yes, yes. I mean, what the organisation gives them uh, an opportunity, yes. and you know, I think I'm very fortunate to be in such a position. Mm. Um, uh, I think what somebody once asked me is, "Why do you do it? You know, it's yes. long hours. It's." Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and effort mm. and so I said, you know, I'm in a very privileged position because I have the opportunity to touch people mm. in, and, and it, it get, make an impact in their lives in many ways, mm. be it an important deal that's done in a business mm. and how it's mm. executed and how it's done, to giving uh, an opportunity to one of the staff to grow and mm. learn and learn a new skill and, you know, um, betterment for themselves. So those things, you know, when you, when you, when you reflect on it, mm. it's what we have to do day to day, but when yep. you when you realize the impact it has. So would you say people management is your first first? Hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. One second. Uh, in your so business, so people management is ninety percent of the work because yeah. if you're looking at it, be it a client, a mm. supplier, mm. a member of staff, mm. like that's what you do. Yeah. Um, the, the other ten percent is just the paperwork. Is, the, is <laughs> you have to do that. You can't <laughs> get away from it. Right? <laughs> and having looked at you know, given the breadth of markets that you've looked at, these very frontier markets. Is the is the ingredient is is the cake the same in every all these countries or would you say it different it's, it's different? I think it's different. I, yeah. I, I, for me, Kenya is very interesting. Yes. Um, for example, Kazakh, go back to Kazakhstan. Very interesting market, but driven purely by oil and gas. Yes. Hundred yes. percent because it's very rich. So this is a bit like Angola, Nigeria today. Precisely. Right. Precisely. Mm. And you know that it's fallen a little bit flat there because mm. what's happened to the price of oil. Um, Nairobi is a little bit different in that way. It's 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 uh, kind of a hub, a central hub. It's like, almost like a, a platform ready to to bounce. Mm. Um, you have you're bullish, huge, right? Yes, mm. I, I I'm very upbeat about mm. uh, about Kenya and Nairobi. I think it, it it we've we've only scratched the surface of what can be mm. what can be possible. Um, I think you can see that for four and five years I've been in Nairobi, the yeah. skyline has changed. Totally. Uh, you know, the infrastructure is coming into place where it wasn't before. Mm. People complain about traffic, but when I reflect on it, yeah. when I came, yes. and now it's yes. different. It's much easier. There's yeah. a bit of flow in, in, in movement. Um, but you, you see from the let's take the hotel bedroom yeah. capacity. Mm. Um, in the next year, there's a thousand bed nights coming into Nairobi. Into Nairobi. Into Nairobi. Yes. Alone, of different segments, and I yes. think that's that's probably the key: the different segments coming yes. in, because purely it was focused on a five-star market. Yes. Uh, and now there's been di it's diversified from the three-star upwards. Yes. And and that kind of caters for well, a lot of companies have become cost conscious mm. so you know each mm. each each tier has a per diem that they can use so now mm. there's more of a choice and variety coming in which yes. is good I think from a consumer point of view yeah. um, from a hotelier's point of view it, it's going to make us more competitive yes uh, and focusing on what's keys as a service yeah. um, you know not uh, not really you know we're here we're the only choice which mm. is what was probably six years ago yes um, and there was more demand than there was supply uh, really um, and now I think there's going to be the shift yeah. where there's going to be more supply than demand mm. but I think that's that's kind of uh, a, a normal transition in developing uh, market mm. uh, because supply will overtake demand and then demand will catch up yes and I think that's what we find with oil and gas or you know mm. with, with the oil prices yeah. hitting the, the the low yes a lot of that business um, kind of the the, 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 the spearhead yes the, it, the momentum died a little bit yeah. And Kenya has that, and it's got tourism. Uh, it's got uh, uh, the, the business community, the banking, insurance sector is growing. Um, so th it's very interesting with the diplomatic world as yes. well. And you know, it, it's a hub for East Africa. Yes. Uh, you see a lot of the the big uh, multinationals re relocating uh, their Africa offices to yes. to Nairobi. Yes. Um, so f as from a hotel perspective, that has yes. Uh, you know, has but what you're market. describing is a more nuanced market and a market that's now developing. I mean, you're t you're talking about three star offerings, four star offerings, different price points. Right. Um, another thing is we've had a lot of big big ticket visitors. You know, Obama and uh, these Ungtad. We got TCAD coming right. along. Right. 
do we have the elasticity to accommodate people when we have these big events or are we then short are we net short on such a such a it, it, it comes a shortage mm -hmm. yeah I think when those big events come you see the the strain on on the system and, and the number of rooms available yeah. and that's perhaps the reason why that the the, the supply is increasing so yes. going down the road you know this will become a hub for for, for these kind of for meetings that, and, yeah. and it's, it's poised very nicely for that I think yes. Um, that, along with probably the meeting convention, you know, having the, the meeting set convention centers developed with an infrastructure around it, because yes. part of the problem now is the hotels are so widely spread. Yes. Um, and when you have such, such, such uh, meetings and events, it creates a little bit of pressure on the infrastructure. Mm. I think, you know, as well as the hotels developing, with the infrastructure developing in tandem, it'll be, uh, mm. it'll be the right way forward. Are you seeing good leadership out of, for example, the government side? Obviously, this is such an important component of the economy. Mm. I come from Mombasa, and you really feel it when Mombasa is suffering, the entire economy is suffering yeah. because the money is not coming down, there's no trickle down. Sure. Yeah. It's Mr. Balala, uh, uh, how, does, how does he rank that for you? No, you know, when Mr. Balala was there before in his mm. first time, uh, you could see uh, the, the, the traction in tourism coming yeah. in. Then it sort of died down a little bit. Mm. And since he's back, there's a bit of a resurgence and yes. bounce. Yeah. Um, and it's probably the right time yeah. because, you know, Kenya's suffered in the last, yes. as you say, Mombasa's on mm. his knees, a lot of places closing. Um, and now it's kind of upbeat. Yeah. So. The, the investment has gone in previously mm. with you know making magical Kenya campaign. Yes. Um, the fruits are probably coming in now. I think I think with Mr. Balala, it's probably yeah. the, the right leadership to try and take it to the next level. Yes. Uh, as long as he's got the backing from 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 the government to, yes. uh, to, to follow. And you feel confident that, that that's happening. At, at this to currently, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think. Let me ask you another question. What I noticed about tourism in general is that we've seen a lot of changes. I mean, you know, we've seen Egypt come under a lot of pressure. We've seen Turkey come under a lot of pressure. Have we benefited, or would you say we haven't yet benefited from that? Uh, you know, I think Kenya's been very unfortunate. Mm. Um, has always been in the headlines for the wrong reasons, mm. unfortunately. Um, and I guess because Kenya is such a newsworthy country, mm. and whenever something somebody sneezes here, mm. the, the rest of the world knows about it. Mm. Um, and, and fortunately for Kenya, but unfortunately for the other parts of the world, what's happened recently has kind of shown that you know it's not just Kenya or Africa. It can happen in the doorstep of Europe and even the heart of America. Um, so what's happened in Egypt, Turkey, in some ways, yes uh, and no. Uh, no, because I think the people are becoming more cautious. Um, are they going to stay? Are they going to go somewhere else? And, and, or they, they stay in their domestic realms and do the tourism there? Um, yes, because it, it just made Kenya like, you know, it could happen anyway, so you know why would I, why would I put off my safari mm. just in case mm. it could happen at home? So let yeah. me go and do it now. Mm. Um, I think that the, the whole world economy is changing a little bit as well. Mm. Uh, we talked about uh, you know, the, Brit the Britain exiting yes. Europe. I think that has a ripple effect, which is mm. probably going to affect us in tourism in some way, shape, yes. or form down the yes. down the road. Uh, the com combination of what's going on in the U.S. with elections mm -hmm. is going to slow down the American traffic coming in. Yep. Our own elections yes. coming up next year will probably have an impact on traffic. And unfortunately, it's happening right in the, especially for this property, right in, the, in, in August when uh, the migration season and this is the, the peak demand. This is such a beautiful time of year to be here. Why Correct. don't you tell us a little bit about the migration My, season? I mean, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see that, that, that volume, you've experienced a little yes. bit of it, just the beginning. Fantastic. Um, when you see the, the nature, the, yeah. cir the circle of nature, as, as mm -hmm. we talked about, uh, yeah. Uh, the wildebeest trying to cross off, cross over the crocodiles picking them off. Um, it, it's it's you know you can't describe it. You yeah. can't describe it. It's one of these scenes that you have to see, and you can just sit there and watch mesmerise mm. for hours. Hours. The thing about the Mara is you see something on a regular basis. Or, but looking around, being at the, being at, being on the property, I noticed the different configuration of your tourists these days. I saw a lot of people from the Far East. Yes. I saw a lot of people from the Middle East. Do you want to tell us about that? Because I remember in the old days, this was really a very North American, Good. UK thing, Good. European thing. I, is it changing? Are we finding different people coming to enjoy this kind of yes, offering? Yes, yes, hundred percent. And and. You know, the, uh, again, the, that kind of corresponds with how the world economy is developing. You know, China developing the way it is. The middle class is growing. Yes. India, the middle class has grown very much. Um, and the Middle East, you see it, it's a mixture. It's a hub of, of sort of a, a, a expat sort of, you know, uh, expat hub, I guess, mm. you know, from different parts of the world. 
So the, the Chinese are, are coming in a big way because of the infrastructure developments and companies yes. that have been here. So it's, it's put Kenya on the map, mm. whereas I guess the middle class Chinese were going more for Europe yes, and the States. Yes, but you're they're, seeing them now come. They're coming here and, and, and that's kind of translated into people's, um, like I say, their desires in travel mm. changing. Yes. They're not looking for going to... Yeah, what know, are they looking for? They're looking for an experience now. Mm. They're looking for something that they can, they can relate to. Mm. Um, uh, you know, you, you, you see ecotourism, yes. um, sus sustainable tourism, those sort of experiences that, you know, that they're very mm. developed mm. to a traveler is looking for. Chinese, for example, yes. you see there were, a lot of them were flocking to the Maldives recently, yes. but, yes. You know, but the why? Chinese don't really like the sun, the yes. sand. Yes. But why are they going there? Because the, the, the rumor is that the Maldives will be gone in, oh. in a few years. So now they want to be there and take a, be a part mm. of it and say, I've been there, had that experience. And likewise, I guess that's where they're coming to, to see a place like Africa. They know that some of these elephants, rhinos, they're going to change. Plus, elephants and rhinos are also part of their culture in many ways, yes. uh, which is the, the other side, which, yeah, we, which, yeah. we, which we don't like. The downside. Correct. Mm. But so I think they want to come and see it firsthand. Yeah. And now they have the disposable income freedom to travel, so they are coming. Indian market, big market, mm. middle class developing. They're looking for these experiences. Yes. Um, you know, the, the tradition of going to P London, Paris, New York. Mm. Uh, I think people will still do that, but they still want a, a different yes. experience. And, yes. and this is where Africa comes in. Uh, you, you see little you know, parts of Antarctica being Greenland, Iceland being, being more coming in the forefront in yes. the places of destination to go. So I think people are looking for an experience. Mm. Then, you know, they're not looking to, for the traditional routes. They're looking for a new experience, mm. something they can relate to. And then something like a, you know, a heritage hotel franchise like this, I mean, people might not know, but this was first owned by Tiny Rowland um, many years ago, and then it was sold to the Block family, I believe. And then I think from Block family, that's when Kingdom Holdings bought bought it, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Is that the sequence? Correct. Correct. Yes. The sequence, yes. And then if you look at something like uh, the Norfolk, that's you know more than a hundred years old Correct. probably. Correct. And so a lot of tradition and history in Correct. here. It's, it's slightly different to some of the newer properties we're seeing. Correct. Mm. But that goes back to the experience that people are that, looking for. Right. So, so they, want, they want to be a part of history and mm. who's been there. And these new hotels coming in, mm. Very nice, yes. uh, and you know I think there's a market that look for that comfort, convenience, mm. and um, there's a market for everything mm. there. I think, um, but the, the, the leisure market and people come in. But sometimes the business market. They, yes. look, they look for somewhere like the Norfolk to stay because there's a bit of history there. Yes. So, yeah, I was in Nairobi for business, but mm. I said the Norfolk, yeah. you know, a hundred years old, uh, Prince Charles, mm. the Queen Elizabeth, all That's these people right. have been through the, through the doors. Mm. Um, so they they look for that something that they can relate to. Yeah. Uh, I think that's important. But we were also saying that this sort of place would be fantastic for a corporate weekend or a, you know, a senior management get together. Correct. I can't think of a better. Correct. I mean, you, you know, you, you arrived uh, yesterday. Yes. A uh, day before yesterday. Yeah. I arrived yesterday. Um, you know, as, as we discussed, mm. being here a couple of hours, yeah. you switch off it's and it feels fabulous. like you've been here you know, an uh, extraordinary amount of time. But time is kind of timeless in a way, It right? is, totally. And you're right, if you bring a, a corporate uh, team here, it, you know, for them to switch off and unwind and, and do some productive work, yeah. it's a great setting. It's beautiful. Yeah. So we, we've had some incredible settings, the sunset yesterday, the bush breakfast this morning, yeah. and we've seen so many extraordinary things. Yeah. Moshi, I'd really like to thank you. We've had a fantastic time. And um, really, and this is from my heart because I've followed you for so many years. You know, I can't believe how successful you've been, really. Thank you. When we went, just when you were at the Mount Kenya Safari Club, full, excellent food. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then here, of course, it's so good to see it full. And I think that's the Midas touch, the Pereira touch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ali Khan. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.